como é que ela tá? Hey, how goes it? Oh, hey, how are you? Who lives here? Um, uh, we're not actually sure. Do you don't know who lives here? No, no, okay. I don't. We're just here for a noise complaint. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No. The other ones were because they ran like crazy. Beat on the damn door. <laughs> oh. Look at that. Abandoned property. Hey, who's the owner of, uh, or who lives here? Who lives here? Um, I can go get them real quick. Okay, please, please. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Whew, well, <laughs> there's a lot to go through, so I guess uh, we need to get started. This is going to end up being kind of a reality check, right? And we're probably going to need to go through it in three parts. I am going to play additional footage from that body cam as well as the audio from that. And uh, it's really going to give us a visceral sense of who these kids were and what was going on two and a half months before, you know, that horrible tragedy happened at that same place. Now, nothing beats the words of the victims themselves, the, the sights and sounds, without us having to embellish them or put words into their mouths. These words have an ominous ring to them, don't they? <laughs> Now, here at True Crime Rocket Science, we really want to do our due diligence and, and sort of confirm the authenticity of the audio. The visuals look right. The audio, I'm not so sure. But we're assuming that if Fox News republished it, well, maybe there's some credibility there. There does seem to be something indignant, even sort of heartbroken, in these words from Kaylee to Maddie. It almost sounds like someone is heartbroken, doesn't it? But the audio isn't clear, and whatever one makes of that, there's plenty of other audio that has come through in the body cam that gives us a sense of the feeling, the vibe, at the party house. And that's really what I want to concentrate on here. But before we deal with that, bear in mind that the source of this is from Christine Cameron and Alina Smith, the creators and, and administrators of the University of Idaho Murders case discussion, a Facebook group. And what we're dealing with here, certainly in the image, is a hoodie guy is present, sort of hanging around, just sort of like a fifth wheel. But neither of the girls seem to be talking to or about him. In fact, they seem to be talking about another guy. But if the overhead camera overheard what they were saying and overheard it accurately, didn't Hoodie Guy hear it as well? And what were they saying? Well, what does everything likely mean in this context? I told him everything. Doesn't it sound like it's got something to do with sex? Or, you know, it's, if you imagine um, someone who's older who's had an affair, and then, well, did you tell your husband? Yes, I told him everything, right? Doesn't it mean that? If you've cheated on someone or simply had a relationship with someone or had sex with someone, and you eventually come clean. Isn't that what you, isn't that when you use that expression, I told him everything? I mean, how often do you use that expression for anything else? Now, just sticking with this line of reasoning, is it ad advisable in your experience to tell someone everything? Is that what you've done? When you've done that, what has happened? Now, bear in mind, someone is told everything just before four people are murdered. Is that relevant to the story? And that brings up just a very, very simple question. Should you be 100% honest in relationships? Hey, Tars, what's your honesty parameter? 90%. 90%. Absolute honesty isn't always the most diplomatic, nor the safest form of communication with emotional beings. Okay. 90% it is. That might seem like an almost hypocritical thing to say on a true crime channel. You know, shouldn't you be all about the truth 100%? Well, I actually Googled it. Should you tell a man everything? But I think the same applies to a woman. Should you tell a woman everything? Should you tell your partner everything? And according to Google, experts agree that you don't have to. 
I absolutely think that it's not only normal, not only okay, but really great to have to have some private thoughts or things in your life that are just yours. That's according to dating and relationship expert Cora Boyd. So do you agree with that or do you think you've got to be 100% honest uh, about everything? What do you think? Do you think that's the right way to go? Before we get to the rest of this episode, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. For those who have subscribed, welcome to the True Crime Rocket Science community. Bear in mind, there's also discussions going on on Patreon. You can join for $2 a month. That's on patreon.com slash TCRS. But otherwise, welcome. I hope you're going to enjoy it here. And, uh, you know, if you do enjoy the content, please like, share, and leave a comment. And let's get started. Now, can I be perfectly honest about this little bit of um, information that has come through from Fox News? While the surveillance footage, it's actually just sort of camera footage, is something new, it's not as though it adds anything to what we've already seen. Were Maddie and Kaylee out that night in a particular part of town? Yes. Was Hoodie Guy walking with them? Yes. So on the face of it, this adds nothing to that conversation. We just see kind of a shadow of that somewhere else. It's the same thing, just echoing sort of elsewhere. Now, I've spent half an hour trying to match the cracked concrete paving the girls are, are on in, in that sort of screen grab with the walk from the corner pub to the food truck. Thus far, nada. It would just be interesting to know how far they are in their walk, right, from the corner club to the food truck and how far they still had to go in terms of that conversation they were having. Now, as many of you know, I'm a little squirmy about treating social media as a source. I'm allergic to reckless, run-of-the-mill speculation. My friends, I'm not given to wild, unsupported statements. Apparently, I'm not the only one. Someone actually said Facebook group admins collaborating with a major news organization. Uh, what a effing time to be alive. So th that's one sort of response to that. It does seem very weird, this, this whole way that uh, there's kind of a, sometimes an interchange between social media and the mainstream media. Um, the one sort of using the other, the one sort of piggybacking on the other, sometimes in a good way, sometimes in an icky way as we saw with a certain creator. But Cameron does have a point, and one I've raised, suggesting that the few minutes we see playing out b beside the food truck are probably nothing compared to what happened in the hours prior, where the girls were partying in a target-rich environment. She says, and this is a quote from Fox News, we can all scrutinize those couple of minutes at the food truck, but we just have to remember there was an entire evening before this. Well, the party footage I'm going to show you at the end of this video shows that it weren't just a, there wasn't just an entire evening before this. There was an entire semester and semester before that and probably a year before that as well of parties week over many, many, many weekends. So there was a lot building up over a period of time. And all of this is coming to a head at the end of uh, Kaylee and Maddie's sort of uh, student career. They, they were really coming right to the end of their, um, their fairy tale at university. Now, one of the targets, likely an unintended target who nevertheless latched onto them, talking about the targets of their um, sort of uh, showing themselves to be so attractive and sort of almost... Um, uh, making themselves in a way available, you know what I mean, dressing up on a Friday night kind of thing. One of the targets in this target-rich environment was Hoodie Guy. Now, while I agree one can and should extrapolate the food truck video to what went on before, and Joe, the guy I called Beard Guy, um, he told us the girls were getting a lot of attention these statements seem to be an invitation to focus on Hoodie Guy. For example, where Christine Cameron says, he wasn't just staring at them, he was with them prior. So should we? Should we target Hoodie Guy? Should we focus on him? Thus far, much of the speculation has felt like throwing pasta against the ceiling. One minute it's 
hoodie guy the next it's Adam and who's it going to be after that so this neighbor or that neighbor and um, I've shared some of my own thoughts on hoodie guy right at the beginning the path of least resistance for social media now is to sort of have this witch hunt in terms of Adam to see if there's an Adam on Kaylee's friends list on Instagram answer there is and simply based on that, begin to speculate whether Adam is the murderer. There's also a TikTok of the same Adam appearing to smoke a kitchen knife. Perfect fodder for clickbait. Adam, if you're listening, set your social media to private. In fact, anyone who is or was a student at the University of Idaho ought to do this or to have done this. Anyway, imagine if your cousin is murdered and simply because you're related and are on their Facebook I mean, I'm trying to make this personal to you. That makes you a suspect. Just because you have some relation to someone that someone else sees, you automatically become a murderer in their shallow appreciation of it. Social media is trying to rein this sort of thing in on certain platforms. But it's a bit like um, a pot of boiling water. You put a lid on it here and it bubbles up somewhere else. So instead of going over that here which I think social media is going to be doing anyway. And you could argue that it's sort of, it could be rooting something out, right? And that's something that is sort of inevitable. What I want to do here is deal with this topic in a woods instead of trees way. In other words, deal with this topic of sex and, and who was sort of coming out of the woodwork in terms of that aspect but in more of a global way, instead of focusing on a particular person, focus on what is actually happening, right? So from a Woods perspective, what's the primary dynamic at university? Let me say that again. From a Woods perspective, and this is not in terms of the University of Idaho case, it's in terms of your experience, your thoughts, your impressions, what is the primary dynamic at university? What's the first thing that comes to mind or came to mind when, when it was your turn to go to university or when you thought of university or when you were at university? University can be a place where there are strong emotions, politically speaking. Let's face it, some of the issues that have come up in America and beyond, I'm talking about in the last year or two, from how to deal with the pandemic – to Roe versus Wade, to other political forces dividing the nation and the nation's youth. And we can see some evidence of politics and activism in the broader fabric of the University of Idaho right here. So universities can be places with incredibly complicated dynamics. People are becoming uh, experts. People are becoming qualified in certain areas. Um, some people are falling out because they can't, you know, they don't have the self-discipline to complete courses. Some people are changing courses. There are all sorts of relationships evolving, devolving, developing and terminating. Some in a normal, natural flux, others less so. For some people, it's a shock that things aren't working out. For others, it's just a wonderful magic carpet ride. It's the very nature of college life that relationships are finite. They've got a limited lifespan. They've got a sell-by date where students graduate and they go on. And some people um, go on and, and some people fall out. Students come and go. That, that's the nature of the beast. And relationships can fire up suddenly and burn out just as quickly. It's part of the song and dance, the fun of being young, right? But all of that stuff is the trees. What are the woods when it comes to university? <laughs> now, I must tell you, I got as far as that. And I'm sitting here now after two and more hours have gone by, the script half written um, when the power went out. And meanwhile, just as that happened, two sets of body cam have come out. And interestingly, as I sort of put that script down, this body cam just confirms the thing I've been trying to emphasize in this video. I mean, I came up with this thought about the sexual aspect before the body cam came out. Um, but the body cam really reinforces this in a visceral and real way. 
you might look at the body cavity and say, what are you talking about? But it's not, um, it's the subtext to it. It's not shadows and um, doors opening and closing. What's the subtext to what you're seeing? Now, although I want to isolate the sexual perspective, as you can see in this footage, it's mixed in with drugs or alcohol and rock and roll. Remember I was talking about sex, drugs and rock and roll being the fabric of college life. So you, we're seeing some drugs or alcohol, well, probably more alcohol, overtly in this footage, which I'm going to play at the end of this episode. But what is the point of the alcohol to a large extent? What is the point of, of, of the drugs to some extent? What's the point of all of that? Now, I think it's one thing to try to explain that in a sort of a dry, you know, dry way. When you see it, and what we're doing is not really seeing it, we're catching tiny glimpses through the curtains of 112, 112 to King Road. We're catching glimpses through that open door, which sort of opens and shuts. It sort of actually seems to be guarded, right? You don't see any of the girls coming down after the first school does. What's going on behind those closed doors, you've got to wonder. And when you hear it, we, we're actually only catching tiny fragments, a few words here and there. But can you see how real this felt if you were actually there? Right? You're getting a sense of what somebody else felt, just a slight, a slight taste of what somebody else felt. That's what the, this body cam does. And I will be going through it in a lot more detail. This is really just a very broad overview. Now, it takes us there for a brush with the reality of these kids, one that I'd say is overdue. Now, let's get back to the theory. When you think about university, not the University of Idaho, your college experience, what's the first thing you think about? If you have kids that are about to go to college, what do you imagine they are going to be doing at uni? Yes, sex. It's the subtext. Even if we don't acknowledge it, it's the woods when we're talking about university. It's the, the main thing, that the main sort of concern. But I suppose you could also call it the main attraction. And I think, uh, isn't it fair to say the following? Everyone, when they think about university and they think about sex at university, is kind of thinking, I hope I'm going to get my fair share. I hope I'm going to get a fair shake in terms of that aspect, right? And think about it, did you? <laughs> Probably don't answer that. Keep, it, keep the answer to yourself. Now, this is generally, this is generally speaking, right? Now, take that thinking and apply it specifically to this case. Think about a big house with five pretty 20-something girls, Four blondes and a brunette. What do you think happens in a party house full of hot chicks? Do you think they drink tea or sip wine? What do you think these guys in the video are doing there or hoping to experience at these parties? And from a guy's perspective, and this isn't to ask whether this is appropriate or not, it's, not, it, it's what do you think is happening to a 20-year-old guy what is going on in his pants when he's just about at his sexual peak and this sort of thing comes onto his social media radar? What do you think he's thinking? What do you think he's feeling? What do you think he's wanting? If sex is in the air, and it is, this is sex on steroids. And I imagine the guy looking at this isn't as cool or charming or as suave as those guys opening the door and dealing with the cops. They, they're kind of quite confident. They seem to be quite good looking as well. They seem kind of hunky, right? Now, doesn't it seem like these girls are available in a sense, but not to just anyone and not to everyone? So how does this feel from the perspective of look but don't touch? Can you sort of see what the attractive, what, what is um, attracting a guy like hoodie guy and why he's throwing his arm up when he's the sort of he seems to be right there on the verge of some kind of successful encounter only to end up as the biggest loser on November 13th 
it's not just that moment, though. He's been dealing with the sights and sounds of that night and all the parties that have happened before, probably also here in September, also what's on social media, all those glimpses and glances in the hallways and classrooms as well. And probably between a lot of that, fantasies and fantasizing. And the footage you hear and see of the cops locked out because they're about to spoil the fun is precisely what someone may experience if they set a foot wrong. If um, in, the, uh, in the eyes of these kids, someone is there that, that isn't, isn't really welcome, well, what, are the, what, what happens to them? If someone sort of sets a foot wrong in the socio-sexual dance, in the, I don't know, the, the chess game that is, you know, um, pairing up at, at, at college, right? That, that whole sexual dance at, at college life. If someone is sort of not really invited to that, what does that feel like? I mean, if the chips fall in your favor, the Stacys and Chads, find their way to their fairy tales and it's all wonderful. It's all warm and fuzzy and everyone's um, smiling. Meanwhile, hoodie guys look on from the cold and lonely shadows. They look up at the house, they see those golden windows, but they're locked out. Now, it's one thing to say, see, here's someone living a fairy tale and look at this image of Maddie in... Waikiki, literally in paradise. One thing to say that. It's another thing to see it. It's another thing to get a sense of what it was actually like when you could set these images into motion. Feel the breeze, feel the balmy breeze. Smell the smell of, of rum and uh, tequila and cocktails and the sweet sort of cherry lip gloss and all of that paraphernalia, right? But there's also someone else looking on from the outside, wishing, wanting, and realizing with each passing moment, minute, hour, day, month, and year that they are not invited, that they are actually not part of this fun house. And over time, it sinks in. The flush of youth hasn't amounted to much life or much living. The flush of youth that had seemingly so much promise. Well, in my life, it hasn't amounted to much. It just hasn't had much drawing power compared to the flush of youth in everybody else. Instead, I've been passed over and I'm losing out on my fairy tale while I admire yours. And so the nightmare only deepens, well, for me. So what do you think? Was sex the motive after all? Sexual frustration? Sexual frustration compounded over days, weeks, years, night after night. And that's not just it being denied, but the, the expectation, the fantasy of it, the hope being dashed again and again and again. Meanwhile, you're seeing other guys getting laid and getting lucky and whatnot. When our lot in life isn't awesome, it's always so much worse when you compare it to someone else who's living the dream, isn't it? And therein lies the rub. Therein lies the sort of the solution as well. Um, if you want to be unhappy, keep comparing yourself unfavorably to others. If you want to find a road to happiness, find it in your under in, in, under your own terms, in your own steam. You know, given your own circumstances, within your own identity. Now, one of the last things I want to say is, do you remember a few days ago, maybe as long as a week ago, when we looked at the food truck footage, I was trying to explain as delicately as I could, as sensitively as I could, how the girls being girls might trigger annoyance in someone, you know, because they are pretty and people are paying attention to them, but they nevertheless, um, they've got their an idea of who they are interested in and they are somewhat um, drunk but they sort of kind of um, not misbehaving but they are um, possibly upsetting certain people right remember that conversation 
And do you remember, I think I said I spent 20 minutes just dealing with that. Now, just as a matter of course, when someone is not completely sober or something is going on that's a little bit unusual, like partying and trying to get a particular outcome within that, um, that can actually cause some people to feel not so good. Some people might feel wonderful, but other people may not feel that great, just as a matter of course. But the important thing to think about in terms of this this dynamic is how is a loser going to take all of this? A loser might really take this the wrong way, especially when he's been losing, he's been on a losing streak for a really long time. Just the idea of that. Now, many people push back at the idea that Kaylee, just the idea that maybe Kaylee didn't pay. And of course she did pay, but it was this idea that she didn't do anything wrong. She didn't do anything quote unquote wrong. She didn't do anything that could have upset, for example, the grub, the, the, the grub truck dude, right? She couldn't have done anything to annoy him. But that pushback misses the point. The, this new body cam shows how not entirely honest or fair or nice things can be if you're on the outs. And we get that perspective from the cops. We share, to some extent, the annoyance because we want to look inside. We also want to talk to someone. We want to look over their shoulders and see Maddie or Kaylee or Zanna or Ethan, right? And so you notice the cops getting annoyed and even angry. And, and aren't you getting a little bit annoyed and angry as well? Even though it's just kids being kids. So if you are feeling that way, and I don't think it's rocket science. I think it's normal just to feel a little bit irritated with what's going on. Like, where are you? Like, just come to the door. But the point is, in a scenario like this, where there's a lot of fun and games, there are also broken hearts. And as an adult, you can take the fun and games and all of this like the cops are, you know, with a little bit of a pinch of salt. They're students. This is what you sort of deal with. But a kid in that situation, maybe it's happened not once but a few times, might stand there and actually feel quite devastated and feel like, this is my life. I'm a nobody. I'm a nothing. I'm locked out. I'm not going to get anywhere in the world. In South Africa, there's a saying in Afrikaans, Van lekker lach kom lekker heil. And it means, it translates literally to, from having a good laugh comes having a good cry. In a way, I suppose you could apply it to a party, but from partying a lot comes tragedy, in a way. It's a little more edgy than from having a good laugh comes having a good cry. It, it cuts worse than that sounds. It means karma, not really karma, but something unexpected but not entirely unexpected, can happen when you're looking the other way, when everything's going well and you're having so much fun. The September 1st footage, which you're about to see, shows just how hard these kids were partying, just two and a half months shy of D-Day. So what we're seeing is a lot of laughing, a lot of fun. Well, who was on the other side of that? Who was on the outside of that? What, what could that have felt like? You get a little glimpse of that from what the cops feel, just waiting for these kids just to acknowledge them. They were partying so hard it led to a noise complaint. Even when the cops came, they were shut out. And who, who emerged as the go-to person in the house? The guys, yes, but they sort of referred to Madison. Her name comes up. So was she the de facto leader of the group? So it wasn't she... Wasn't Maddie the Rapunzel at the very top of the hierarchy at 1122 King Road? Wasn't she the one that the guys wanted the most? So if sex was the motive, was Madison the target after all? If the sex and other stuff was gratuitous and everyone was having a good time, just not you, how did that feel to that person, to that certain someone? So I'm not going to take it further than that. I'm going to play out with this body cam footage. And I want you to think about it from the point of view 
of a student, not as these cops, but as a student that is sort of standing there, hovering around, wants to get in, but just can't, wants to go through that door and be smiled on and flirted with and whatever, but it's just a bridge too far. How does that feel? What does he do with those feelings? And this isn't just someone who's kind of a loser. He's got self-esteem problems. Maybe his family relationships aren't that great. Maybe he doesn't have that many friends to begin with. And that is why this hurts so much. It's like a, a dagger to the chest. It's something he, he really and dearly wants. And it's something that is going to make him feel like a person. But he just can't get it. Does that make sense? So can you see, could sex have been the motive after all? Truly is. This is what the other group had that ran away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those ones kept walking to the car and the other one around the back corner. So, abandoned property. Well, there's a lot of fucking alcohol in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's all the way over there. Just everyone fucking ran away? They not gonna come back? Do you think I'm gonna leave? here for a noise complaint come to the damn door I'll teach you how to knock the search just ring for a bell all right Hey, bud. We're just here for a noise complaint. Can you tell whoever lives here to come talk to us? Sorry, I did not hear you. Sorry, say that again. We're just here for a noise complaint. Whoever lives here needs to come talk to us, or we're going to start doing a lot more than just deal with noise. Go tell them. Yeah, just tell them to come to the front door. We'll front deal with the noise complaint, and we'll leave. Yep, thank you. Yep. Stupid fucking idiots. They're scared. Oh my god! I think someone's coming down now. You've got, I think, several people coming down. Finally! No one's here that no one's here no. at all. No so everyone here is trespassing? Well, no one's here that's trespassing, but no one, no one that lives here is here right now. So where'd they go? 
they're just not here. I have no clue where they went. No clue. So you guys just throwing a party in in, in their house at the time? They were here at one point. They're not here right now. I just I they, just searched all the rooms. They left and went over to some other party, and everyone is about to I just searched go all over to another party. Okay. Who does live here? What are their names? I am actually not sure. I live across the street. Okay. I just came over. I haven't drank a drop. Male, female, affiliated with? I uh, don't know. I, I don't, yeah, I you don't do. Know I don't know if they're associated with the... So I guarantee you they're associated with the sorority. As many of them are living here, it's an off-campus campus sorority house. I've been a cop for 22 years here. I'm not stupid. Don't play dumb games with me. I'd rather deal with this as a noise complaint than getting a hold of the Greek council and the Greek board and all of that and the dean of students and playing all these stupid fucking games. Do you, all I want to do is deal with the noise complaint. Because I guarantee you there's a lot of underage drinking because they left their alcohol behind. Do you want us to try and... Get a name or a phone number Please, and if you, you can could. call someone. We just need to I, talk I, to somebody who lives here because otherwise I have yeah. to be under the assumption you guys are unlawfully entered because no one who lives here is here. Okay. Right? We'll, we'll go. We'll so go I go need, need to verify number. that there was a party here. We'll now everyone left. We'll so thank you. We'll right. Thanks, guys. We're not trying to make your life I understand. Yeah. I just letting you know this is how it's going to play out. I'm not going anywhere until I talk to somebody no, who actually lives here. Just know that it's sweet. For us, that way we can get yeah. some sort of communication between us no, and them. No one that lives here is here right now. No. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I do. Thank you. Hey, guys. Really, we're just coming here for this. Someone from this house comes down here all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm sure they fucking, I think a bunch of them bolted. Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. And they knew we were in the front and they went that way. There were some coming up behind us and they, I don't know where they went, but they looked like they were probably headed this direction. Yeah. Yes, please just go call someone. Thank you. All right. Well, they told me they just live across the street, so that means they're Sigma Chi. Yep, they're Sigma Chi. He pointed right at it. <laughs> yes, he did. That was not smart. Not until and don't tell me this yeah. isn't a fucking off camp. I think someone's coming down now. You've got, I think, several people coming down. Finally! No one's here that no. at all. No one's so everyone here is trespassing? Well, no one's here that's trespassing, but no one, no one that lives here is here right now. So where'd they go? They're just not here. I have no clue where they went. No clue. So you guys just throwing a party in, in, in their house at this They were time. here at one point. They're not here right now. I just I they, just searched all the rooms. They left and went over to some other party, and everyone is about to, I just to go all over to another party. Them. Okay. Who does live here? What are their names? I am actually not sure. I live across the street. Okay. I just came over. I haven't drank a drop. Male, female, affiliated with? I uh, don't know. I, I don't, yeah, I you don't do. Know if I don't know if they're associated with the... So, I guarantee you they're associated with the sorority. As many of them are living here, it's an off-campus campus sorority house. I've been a cop for 22 years here. I'm not stupid. Don't play dumb games with me. I would rather deal with this as a noise complaint than getting a hold of the Greek council and the Greek board and all of that and the dean of students and playing all these stupid fucking games. Do you, all I want to do is deal with the noise complaint. Because I guarantee us, you there's a lot of underage drinking because they left their alcohol behind. Do you want us to try and... Get a name or a phone number Please, and if you, you could. call someone. We just need to I, talk to somebody who lives here because otherwise I have yeah. to be under the assumption you guys are unlawfully entered because no one who lives here is here. Okay. Right? We'll, 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 we'll go. So we'll I need to verify number. that there was a party here. We'll now we'll everyone we'll left. We'll so thank you. We'll right. Thanks, We're guys. Not trying to make your life I understand. Yeah. I just letting you know this is how it's going to play out. I'm not going anywhere until I talk to somebody who actually lives here. Just know that it's super for us. That way we can get some sort of communication between us and them. No one that lives here is here right now. No. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I do. Thank you. Hey, guys. Really, we're just coming here for this. Someone from this house comes down here all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm sure they fucking, I think a bunch of them bolted. Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. And they knew we were in the front and they went that way. There were some coming up behind us and they, I don't know where they went, but they looked like they were probably headed this direction. Yeah. Yes, please just go call someone. Thank you. All right. Well, they told me they just live across the street, so that means they're Sigma Chi. Yep, they're Sigma Chi. He pointed right at it. <laughs> yes, he did. That was not smart. Not until and don't tell me this yeah. isn't a fucking off camp.
I like it when they abandon their shit. Oh! White claws? White claws! They're gonna be so angry at me. They're cold too. Man. Yeah, these are cold. Oh my god. But that one's already open. Hello. Uh, Alright, Josh. J Jordan, you talk to them. Yep. Maddie. Uh, okay. Hi, this is Officer Walsh from Austin Police Department. Who am I speaking with? Just remind people that we can be fairly reasonable, but when people want to be dumb, we have a tendency to be assholes. You hear me, Maddie? And this is my shit, so I don't know. Yeah. This is abandoned property, so we're dumping it and gonna yep. walk away. Uh, They're gonna fair. leave their alcohol when they see us and run away. So they abandon it. And now we're here. Is that we I don't know how the fuck people drink this anyway. <laughs> never had one, never will. No one should be a fan of white claws. Mine? I don't drink. Good on you. I wish I did. Well, I did when I was in college. I drank like a <laughs> son of a bitch. Don't get me wrong. I remember what it's like being a college kid. Yeah, I'm going to take that as Gatorade. This, I'm going to assume, is not. Though. I, have no I, I don't that. assume that's Gatorade. It could be, though. Maybe, maybe. How do you smell that, Maddie? Looks like vodka. Yeah, I'm thinking so. What's your middle name, Madison? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. M-O-G-E-N? Sure I don't know, you can leave it there. I'm sure whoever stashed it will come grab it later. I'm sure. They're gonna come back yeah, and be very upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I poured out all my shit! <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I tell you, you guys are Sigma guys? Uh, I'm a Sigma guy. I'm a, yeah. okay. I was in a house by uh, you buy? Why? You graduated. Graduated. Oh, there you go. I will graduate with the bachelor's. I'm still getting my master's right now. So. What'd you get your master's at? I love like training. So, oh, cool. Okay. I actually got a kid of mine who's starting that program here. Really? Yeah. What's his name? Eric. It's the first year. Eric. What's he's only, he's, he's a...